What's up everybody, I am Jeff with Two Moose Design and in today's video I'm going to bring you guys along on finishing day, walk through step by step on how to spray that beautiful glassy finish. Alright, so this entire process starts with sanding. I sanded these to 150 and for a sprayed finish that is plenty. I could sand these to 80 and get the exact same finish in the end as if I sanded it to 150. The only reason I sand to 150 is because you want to get rid of all the swirls you can. Because if you only sand it to 80, your finish or your wood underneath the finish isn't going to look that good. But you'll achieve the same type of smoothness and like glass like finish whether you sand to 80 or 150. A situation where you would sand higher than 150 is if you're staining. The higher you sand through the grits, the less finish absorbs into the wood. So if you want that lighter stain color, you may sand to 220 and that's fine, but it's not going to affect how smooth your finish lays down in the end. And now that everything is sanded, these are all sanded to 150, solid wood, these are walnut. I go ahead and spray them off to remove as much dust as I can. You want to get all the dust out of the grain and everything like that. I just use this compressed air. I'll just spray off the whole piece before I start spraying it. If you don't have compressed air, even this thing works pretty good. Just, you know, all you're just doing is removing the dust. So let's head into the finishing room and get started with spraying. Okay, so setting up your gun. This is a Fuji gun. I really like the Fuji systems. I also have a Graco. I much prefer the Fuji gun over the Graco gun. The Edge 2, I think it's a great gun. It has a ton of adjustability right on the gun, but they're just far more sensitive than these Fuji guns. I just feel like I can be more sloppy and not clean these quite as much rather than the Graco. You really got to keep them clean or they just start leaking and having problems and not spraying right. Um, I guess that could all be solved by just cleaning your equipment more regularly. I'm just lazy, I guess. Okay. So setting up your gun, you need to set the proper air and fluid that comes out of your gun. First off by setting your air on the Graco system, you can set it manually with the dial on the machine. Also the large Fuji models have the same dial. If you don't have the dial, you're going to have to adjust it with this little valve down here. Or if you have a different setup, it would be on the bottom of the gun. So hopefully you can hear me. If not, I'll just have to voice over this. But you want to start out with a pattern roughly as big as your hand. And then the distance you're shooting away is roughly as far as your hand. This is just, this is just water. So as you can see, my, my fan is way too big. There we go. And then the distance away, about just less than a hand width. Okay, then also when you're, when you're spraying and overlapping, you want to have at least a 40, per, 40 to 60 percent overlap. If you don't overlap enough, you'll see them lines of the overlaps in the, in the sheen once you're done. So hand width apart, about a one hand spray pattern, and then you're overlapping at least 50%. And that should be pretty good basics. And then for fluid, um, on this one, I don't really know exactly how many turns, but you kind of, there's no secret recipe. You kind of want to match it to how you flow. So if you might just spray faster than other people, and then you're just going to need to raise your fluid a little more. On my Graco gun, my air and my fluid <clears throat> are about 75%. On this one, it's a dial, so I don't know exactly how to tell you. But just start with it. Start with it all the way closed. Then just give it a couple, couple turns. And then you just don't want so much coming out to where you feel like you're rushing or getting drips, but you also don't want too little to where you feel like you're not just getting enough fluid. It's hard to explain, but after you spray a little bit, I think you'll start to understand. So before we start spraying, I'm gonna give my gun a quick cleaning just because it's been a while and I need to actually switch the needle because I was using a different finish before. But I primarily spray water-based finishes, so I'll spray my finishes for the day and then I'll just run some water and just a little tiny bit of soap through this gun just to get all the finish out of there. And that's just fine, I haven't had much issues. And then I'll give my gun an actual good cleaning, take it apart, clean everything, probably once a month or every other month. But for the most part, I just spray the water and a little bit of soap through it, and that's just fine. If you're using a more, more harsh top coat, you're gonna have to use something like Backer Thinner to clean out your gun, but that's another reason I like the water-based. It's not harsh and it's easy to clean. Okay, 
so everything's apart. I'll either use some lacquer thinner, fill up this cup and let my stuff soak for a couple hours and scrub it off. Or if I just want to get it done like I am now, this uh, carbon choke cleaner. You wouldn't think this would work great, but it does. Cleans all unpainted metal parts, dissolves gum, varnish, blah, 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 blah. Works great. Oh, this is just a planter tray. They're like 60 cents. Get every little coat and everything so it can start dissolving it. So as you can see, it's getting pretty clean. I'm just gonna zoom through all this and just, all I'm doing is cleaning all the little pieces, make sure everything's clean and residue. So we're gonna fast forward through all this and skip to the spraying part. Okay, all my trays are clean. I have as much dust off as them as I can. So now I spray the bottom and I set the trays on these, these what I call pokey boards. It's just a piece of scrap wood with some screws through it. And then I just slightly smash down the tip so they're not sharp and dig into the piece. With the hardwood, I do not notice any dents or marks. With softwood, if you're not careful, you these will dent the wood. Okay, so we're using this is actually a 1.3 needle. And for this finish, I'm using now it's fine. I'll show you that in a little bit, but 1.3 is pretty much standard. Or it's like, I'm sure they're a little different with all of them, but it's kind of like the standard size, which would be fine for most finishes. On my other general finishes finish, general finishes finish, I use a 1.1. And the only reason I do that is because when I was spraying, I was getting a small, I was getting a ton of tiny little bubbles, little micro bubbles and adjusting my air didn't do anything, so I dropped down to the 1.1 needle and that solved everything. But for this finish, it sprays best at 1.3. If I drop down to 1.1 with this finish, it'll, it'll feel like I just can't get enough. So hopefully that kind of helps you get to the point where you can kind of figure out what needle you need. But for the most part, the 1.3 or the general size needle will be fine. And then now we're gonna lay our first coat and we're gonna lay down just enough to where you get a nice sheen across the whole thing, but not too much where it's getting real thick and gunky and it's gonna dry weird. Then this is the first coat, so I will lay this one relatively heavy because on that first coat, a majority of it's gonna soak into the, into the wood on that first spray. So we're gonna spray nice and parallel with the surface. I see a lot of people spraying like up here and way far away at an angle. You wanna be as parallel as you can comfortably. And then, you know, a little less than a hand width away and nice even overlaps. And here's how that first coat looks after it dries. So now we're gonna prep for coat number two. If this were stained, I would definitely do the first sanding by hand. Because the last thing you wanna do is sand through and ruin that stained finish underneath. With the solid hardwood items, it just doesn't matter because if I do sand through that finish a little bit, it'll just get cleaned up and blend in with the next coat. So I like to use a used 220 or a 320 grit, that's plenty. You don't wanna to be too aggressive. And when you're sanding this, it's just a quick skim. You're not, you're not sanding the surface, you're just knocking it down and making it smooth and getting rid of any nibs or debris in your finish. Now I'll just give it a quick blow off. My dust extractor does a good job, but I just do it, give it a quick blow off just to ensure I get any, any dust out of that grain. You can use a tack cloth. I stopped using tack cloths a little while ago. I was getting fish eyes on my surface. It was just reacting with my finish, whatever the chemical was on the tack cloth. So if I would just use a damp rag that usually does just fine, especially with the water-based finish, it won't affect anything. But I just blow it off and I have no issue. All right, so now we're gonna move on to coat two. I, I spray that first coat pretty quick and heavy just because it, again, it soaks in most of the way. And then I'll just be a little more cautious on the second and third coat, but it's the same technique, same thing. Maybe just going a little bit slower to make sure I get a nice even coat. And that's pretty much it. So I'll show you guys the finishes I'm using, just because if people are gonna ask. 
So I was using general finishes in Durovar, but they changed the formula and I just wasn't happy with it anymore. So I switched back to this Minwax. It ambers it real nice versus the new Endurovar doesn't. And this is just one of the only water-based finishes I could find with little research that ambered and was water-based. I use that on all my walnut, cherry, mahogany type woods. And then this is what I've been using for pretty much everything else. General finishes, satin, clear poly, works great. I used the 1.1 tip on this and I used a little bit larger 1.3, I believe on the Minwax. So yeah, let's get on to the next coat. I actually ran just short of finish here, but I had just enough to finish these trays, so let's fill this container up. So this is a fresh can, so I'll just get that initial gunk off the bottom, then I'll throw this mixing lid on there, and these things are amazing. I'll link these in the description so you guys can try them out yourself. Just like that, back on track. And this is what it looks like wet. I grabbed the camera as fast as I could to get and get you a close up of what it looks like before it starts drying. And here's that exact same tray three hours later. All right, second coat done. Now let's prep for the third and final coat. So I'm gonna use the same thing as before, old piece of 220, lightly sand the whole thing to get good adhesion, spray it off to make sure it's nice and clean. For these, I only do three coats. It's essentially a piece of decor. It's just an ottoman tray. Three coats is plenty. If it were a table or something large that is a high dollar value or will have high use, I would probably do four or five coats. So we're gonna spray it exactly the same as before, but once you get past that second coat, you really gotta start being cautious now that we're doing the final coat because them overlaps are gonna be super obvious when, when it glares off the light. Turned out wonderful. Three coats, um, I did this in two days. I did one coat and then the next day I did two coats. But if I'm really under the gun, I can get three coats in one day. And then I'll let them sit overnight and then we usually ship them the following day. But yeah, I'll get you guys some close ups and follow this up with some more tips and close this video out. You can still see a little bit of that grain sticking through, which I like. I like the more natural looking, natural grains and finishes. But you can still see these checks in here, which is just, you're not gonna get rid of it unless you spray a ton of coats on here or use something like grain filler. Okay, so filling the wood grain. Woods like walnut aren't that noticeable. Cherry is also another super smooth wood, so this wouldn't really pertain to something like cherry or hickory or maple even. But this here is just red oak, even white oak a little bit. It has these deep grain. I could sand this to 500 grit and you'd still get these little checks. I could spray five, six coats of finish on here and you're still gonna see these little, these little checks and grain in the wood. So you'd follow up with something like this, wood grain filler. You would do this right away before you finish or I've even seen people do it after that first coat. And then you'd fill all these checks in here. You just smear it on and then just lightly sand it off. And that would get you that perfectly glass coat. But I, en I enjoy the grain, it makes it look like real wood versus a piece of smooth plastic. But that's your choice. If you're interested in this, I'll link to all this stuff down below. All right, now a few problems you could run into in spraying are your climate. I always keep my shop climate controlled. Most people don't have that option though. I keep my shop around 70 degrees and then the humidity around, around 50 is great. Over that you're starting to get too humid and under 40 you're starting to get too dry. So in the winter, we live in Wisconsin so it gets very cold and very dry. So I'll start running into problems then. So what I do, so what happens is the air gets so dry and the finish just starts to dry faster than it's designed to, and it'll lead, you, it'll lead to, you'll get small bubbles, you'll get cracking, just weird things happen when the humidity in the air isn't right. So to combat that, I'll use this extender. This solves a lot of problems. If you're having problems in your shop, spraying finish and you get just weird stuff happening, try adding a little bit, extend, a little bit of extender. This is made by General Finishes. I don't think the brand matters. I use this in the Minwax stuff and I use this in the, their clear poly and this solves a lot of problems. And this video is pretty much top coat specific. 
Every finish kind of has its own nuances. I sprayed lacquer for about a year and it's just, it's just not the finish for me. It works great, it's durable, it dries fast. The true lacquer dries super fast. So you're, when you, it's pretty much drying as you spray it. And you don't gotta sand between coats because it burns into the next coat, but you just really gotta be on your game. And also here, because of the winter, it's harder to control the shop when it gets so cold. So the, the lacquer was just so sensitive and it, it would blush and I would just get cracking issues and which is why I switched back to poly because I had a little more control and it was a little more forgiving. So I'll show you guys how I prep these to ship them and then that'll be the end of the video. I always let this, I always let this kind of stuff harden up for at least a day before we ship it just because you need that finish to at least start curing. So I, even if I'm gonna deliver a table, I'll always let that table sit a few days before I handle it and roughhouse it into the truck and do all that. So with these trays, just feel it. You have a nice, smooth, beautiful surface, but occasionally like on these edges here or on these actual edges, you may get like a couple nibs you missed or just a tiny rust spot. So this is just an old used piece of 320. And I'll just give it a nice quick like that and it'll smooth it out amazingly. Even in here, you get a little bit of weird stuff in the corners, just lightly sand it. And then avoid sanding this part if you can. If you get a little nib, you may have to do another coat. Usually every week, I'll probably have one tray where I'll get like a drop of hair or something weird in there and I'll just sand it like I did before, spray another coat and just ship it the next day. Not that big a deal. But if you have to, you can lightly sand the surface to maybe get out some small nibs, which I don't like sanding the actual finished surface because it'll, it'll kind of give it a haze. But after I touch up all this and just give it a couple little wisps of the, the 320 pad, I use this stuff. It's some natural wood wax, wood polish stuff, but I'll just spray it on because they, they sit in that room for a day or two before I ship them. So stuff just gets, kind of gets dusty with everything in the air. So I'll just give it a couple spritz of this and I'll just buff this on and off. And cinnamon lavender. We get a lot of com comments on how good our stuff smells when it arrives. And it's probably because of that stuff. So we just give it a quick cleaning to make sure it's dust free for when the customer gets it. And that's pretty much it guys. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll finish this thing out with some close up shots of just the finish so you can see it a little closer. Always open to video suggestions, comment them down below, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.